शुक्लाधर विष्णु शशिवर्ण चतुर्भुज प्रसन्न वदन ध्याय सर्विघ्नोपात नमस्ते एवरी वन वंस अगेन एंड वेलकम टू टूडेज क्लास सो टूडेज इज ए स्पेशल क्लास इन दैट वी शेल स्टार्ट विद दीम प्रेजेंटेश प्रोजेक्ट दैट यू ऑल हैव बीन एंजॉइंग फॉर लास्ट कपल ऑफ वीक्स आई है change our names change your names so mm-hmm. if you who was asking arnav yeah so in the zoom participants go to participants do you see participants in oh. the zoom toolbar on the participants uh, you click uh, your uh, then you'll see yourself right click and you see more under more you will see rename okay so neel sarthak arnav shrautik sai you people need to fix your name team name first so shrautik it should be sitaram shrautik do the sitaram oh, okay team first then you and those who do not know okay just say unknown so anag just say jadunath anag not team jadunath anag just jadunath okay that way we are able to sort it's a big team um, of um, 35 people now so it will be hard so please follow the instruction arunav if you don't know your team just say unknown do you know your team arunav yes is in bandarkar Okay, so yeah. Bhandarkar Arunav should it should say Bhandarkar Arunav. There's someone named um, Shubham. Yes, unknown. Is it unknown? No, no, no. but uh, Shubham is not unknown. Shubham has a team. No, Shubham, you know the team? Bhandarkar. Bhandarkar. Then say Bhandarkar. He's not, he's not, he's not in the team. Yeah. Which team are you in, Shubham? You moved me to. Bhandarkar, yes, the last class. Okay, then change your name to Bhandarkar. But you are not participating. Looks like you did you participate in the project? He didn't participate in the. Oh, he didn't. He never came. Okay, so you are not even doing homework, Shubham. You need to do something. You just show up for the class and then don't do anything else. That will not be useful. Okay, so let me share my screen now. okay so um, i will do one thing i let me i have turned off chat so you can't chat if you are not able to hear me at any point or not able to see my screen just uh, unmute yourself and let me know okay so that is the mode otherwise keep yourself on mute all the time there will be points in the presentation where we shall pause ask for questions at that time you ask for question other than that don't interrupt uh, somebody else talking especially during the team presentations hold your questions and mute yourself only the person who is talking should present so last week uh, we talked about the ancient human beings in india okay where they came from what were they like what were they doing what we know about them and we uh, talked a lot of um, the so called indus valley or harappan or sindhu saraswati or ancient indian civilization yeah today the 
initial part of uh, the class will be about the project presentations that each of the five teams will be doing. The mode of presentation will be like this. We shall start in the alphabetical order, which is um, going starting with Bhandarkar, then Jadunath, then Majumdar, etc. Each team will have one person sharing their screen. And the entire team that has contributed to creation of content for that presentation can talk. So they can unmute the, that team member who has to talk can unmute. Uh, just uh, say your name and uh, continue um, the presentation. So entire team gets a chance to speak about it. Try to limit your presentation to under five minutes. Okay, so that's another thing. Target to be within five minutes. I will have a, a reminder. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll be okay if it is it goes in minute or so um, beyond five minutes. That's okay, but target it for five minutes. At the end of the presentation, everybody else um, from uh, the audience will get a chance to ask questions. That will include the mentors. That will include me. We shall ask questions, uh, and anybody in the team um, can answer those questions. Okay, so that will be the first topic of uh, today after that uh, there are a few questions that uh, some of you have asked um, and some of the mistakes you made in the homework um, and and that was kind of uh, somewhat common so i will answer a few uh, clarify a few questions um, thoughts on the indus valley civilization homeworks and third thing is we shall start talking about the vedic literature and its history so that we'll see whether the time permits for that. Uh, if um, we have block for half an hour, then we shall open that topic. If not, we shall see what to do. With that, keep the menti.com open. Pick up a pen, write down this code on a piece of paper in front of you so that you don't ask me again and again. Code for today is 87 43 44. Again. 87 43 44 please note it down open a browser go to website called menti m e n t i dot com so all the questions that we will ask the teams uh, that is uh, the site where you will type the question otherwise if everybody everybody starts uh, asking questions then it will a lot of time will go into that so uh, I will moderate the questions at the end of each presentation. Just type your question. And even if uh, you liked the presentation, you want to give kudos to the team, just say good job guys. So that they, the team that has presented will know that you like their presentation. Okay. So I will last time tell you open the website called menti.com. Only thing it asks for is a code and code changes every day. Today's code for this presentation is 87 43 44 note it down when it asks enter that code okay and then hit submit it will let you uh, do this right now it is not open so don't bother about uh, doing it right now just go to menti.com keep the code ready and then quiz is not yet open so don't worry about it i have a question yeah so um i'm like i have the slide for my group and on my screen, I have the presentation slideshow, and then on the right, I have like my Apple notes, so I know what to say. So when I present, is there like an option where I can just present like the tab? I the do not show? know. I do not know. Yes, I think you can. So when you share screen, uh, when you click on Zoom and share screen, mm -hmm. that time it will uh, ask you to share which window. I think yeah. you can choose that just the presentation screen, so okay. that it's not. You. Yeah, I think you can do that. Because if so, not, I might have to ask like someone else for my. That's group. that's that's fine. That, don't worry. Those uh, small things nobody will mind. Okay, that's okay. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Uh, hello. I just uh, joined late. Um. So, can you repeat? Can you just repeat the Mentimeter code? Eighty-seven, forty-three, forty-four, and change your display name to your team name. Let's okay. say Majumdar or whatever that team name is. Just say Majumdar okay. dash. Soham. Okay. So uh, team Bhandarkar will be the first team yeah. to present today. Uh, 
except for team bhandarkar everybody else please mute yourself uh sir do you want me to present my screen? yes i will stop sharing and you okay. start sharing okay and unmute yourself do we have to take notes on the other presentations that will be better so that you can learn about the region they are presenting especially note down any doubts and questions you have during the presentation don't interrupt them let them do their show at the end of it you have your question ready okay you will enter that question in menti.com and if you don't have a question uh, at least applaud that team by giving a good comment okay okay sir it's uh, it's saying that host disabled participant screen okay okay now you try okay uh can you see my screen yes okay so make it a uh, full screen yeah okay go ahead okay so hello everyone my name is abiram and today uh, i am welcoming you to the western region of india The western states and territories of India. The capital of Maharashtra is Mumbai. The capital of Gujarat is Gandhinagar. The capital of Goa is Panaji. And there are two territories by the name of Daman and Diu, and Dadra and Nagar Haveli. This is a map that shows where the western states of India are located on a full map and zoomed in. main languages spoken in western india the most common languages spoken are marathi gujarati and konkani the largest cities in western india and the territories are bombay pune and bashta Ahmedabad and Surat, Gaga and Panaji in Goa. We can't hear you. Let's go. Uh, uh your mic lagged hard, dude. Yeah, like, way hard. Here, turn off your video. Amog, turn off your video. Here are some fast facts mm-hmm. about Western states and their territories. Mumbai is the financial capital of India. Pune is the IT capital of Western India and a historic center of India. Goa is the Miami of India and Rome of East. And Surat is home to artificial fabrics, diamond cutting, and polishing hub. Geographical features. There are many geographical features and landforms in Western India. One of them is the Western Ghats. The Western Ghats are a mountain range that covers an area of 140,000 square kilometers the deccan plateau the deccan plateau is the largest plateau in western and southern india thar desert the thar desert is located in india and pakistan there are many rivers coastlines and waterways in western india most of them most of the popular ones are godavari river and narmada river tapti river and we also have a coast which is the konkan coast Gujarat's culture is very very beautiful. Navratri is a festival of nine nights. The international kite festival is a festival in Uttarayan. Krishna Janmashtami celebrates Lord Krishna's birth. Kaman Dukla and Mohan Dal are sweets. Chaniya Choli for women and Kadiyu for men are traditional Gujarati clothes. In Maharashtra, Ganesh Chaturthi, Gudi Padwa, Makar Sankranti, and Nag Panchmi are famous festivals. Ganesh Chaturthi is the most famous. Lavani is a dance. Sabudana Khichdi, Vada Pav, and Paran Poli are foods. The traditional dress in Maharashtra is the Nalwari. Goa's culture. Fish and curry and zakuti are traditional traditional foods natlam is a konkani festival just like christmas clothing in goa doesn't differ from men but women have a traditional dress which is called a nawari the kini is a goan traditional dance 
And a Goan carnival is a Portuguese Goan festival that is the most famous in Goa. Important historical monuments. Gujarat. The most important monument here is the Somnath Temple in Prabhaspatan. It was first of the 12 Jyote Lingas of Lord Shiva. Looted and destroyed multiple times by Mughal invaders, in present form was reconstructed in 1951. Other monuments are the Dwarkadis Temple, Lakshmi Vilas Palace, the Sun, the Sun Temple, and the Rani Kivak Patan Temple. Next, please. The most important monument in Maharashtra is the Ajanta Alora Caves in Arangabad. They are approximately 30 rock cut Buddhist cave monuments which date from the 2nd century BCE to about 480 CE. Other important monuments are the Elephanta Caves, Chaniwarwada, and the Gateway of India. I had to mention Shivaji Maharaj and uh, your voice cut off, so maybe you may want to turn off your video. Aditya. It's already off. Now it is fine. Okay. We, now we move on to Goa. The most important monument here is the Sri Saptakoteshwar Temple. It was a form of God Shiva. The temple was destroyed by the Portuguese and then recreated in 1668. Ancient sites in Western India. India is a very rich history with numerous sites in Western India that belong to the Indus Valley civilization. One of the sites is Lothal. It was a vital trading center that traded in beads and gems. Lothal is known to have the world's earliest dock. They were known for their seals and metallurgy work. Next, please. Dolavadi is another um, large Harappan site. One of these most important discoveries is a signboard that is a group of letters and symbols. Next. Recent discoveries along the Colcan coast have revealed various rock art sites. Petroglyphs or Pandavachitras as called by the locals. These are images of birds, animals, and a mother and child. Next, please. We hope you liked our presentation. Thank you. That's a great job done. Can we all clap? So uh, can you please all go to menti.com, enter that code and and enter your questions. Uh, Sarvesh, sir, do you want me to um, close the presentation or keep it for the questions? Twenty seconds left.
help, like, help patients. Like, help patients. Uh, help man. patients. Like help it. patients. Patients. It was nice. You can shout true. Yeah, I am trying to turn off the music. It must be somewhere here. It's it's already off, Uncle. We can't hear it anymore. Yeah, but as soon as I share, it will play again. Oh God. No, you have to oh, go to okay. now. It will. Now it will. Options and then say do not share computer sound. Done. Okay, now it will not. Don't worry. Yay. Uh, sir, do you still see my screen? We don't see your screen. Okay, that's fine. We don't. Can you put it? <laughs> okay, so the feedback. See, there are a lot of feed. I'm in the team. Nice presentation. You had a detailed presentation, etc. But let me tell you. First of all, it was awesome job, guys. Very, very impressive, Bandarkar. Someone asked us a question. So, um, someone did ask some questions. Are there any famous people from there? Do people yes, want to answer? Are. Um, there are many famous yeah, people exist. like Mahatma Gandhi and Sri Vallabhbhai Patel and uh, Shivaji Maharaj. Yeah, Shivaji Maharaj. Very nice. Why don't you say Bhandarkar? <laughs> oh Bhandarkar yeah. Also was uh, from yeah. Pune. Okay. So Shivaji Maharaj Lokmanya Balagangadhar Tilak, he was from there. There were so many, so many famous Veer persons. Savarkar. Veer Savarkar was from there, absolutely right. Uh, Peshwas, Bajirao Peshwa, and so many other great uh, leaders were from there. Um, Chimanji, Chimnaji Appa, how many have heard this name? Great warrior, brother of uh, the first Bajirao. Who defeated Tanaji? Portuguese? Tanaji. What about Rani Lakshmi Bai? Lakshmi Bai was not from the West. She was a Marathi, but not from the West. Tanaji. Tanaji. Tanaji Malusure, absolutely. So great warriors. Bas Chandra Bose. No, not from the West. Ambedkar was from Maharashtra as well. Yeah. So Tatiya great Tope. question. What else? Tatiya Any Tope. other question? Tatya Tope. Was a Marathi, but not from the West again. She, he, he was along with the Lakshmi Bai from uh, Bitur and Jhasi, which is in Uttar Pradesh. What about what about um, Shambhaji? Shambhaji, absolutely, son of Shivaji. Shambhaji Maharaj was also from the West. Okay, enough about people. I think that question got answered very well. Any other question? Somebody forgot to add. This is your last chance to ask. Otherwise, what mentors or I may have some question. When I see if I can grow down, you want to make this cheap photo of my legs will work. <laughs> Please make yourselves. So, um, from my side, I think uh, Team Bhandarkar, you people did an awesome job. Um, especially the kind of information you were able to uh, present was uh, truly amazing. It had uh, a uh, lot of um, very nice content and you covered the range of uh, history from prehistoric times with the um, uh, 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 petro uh, glyphs that you showed from goa to uh, the proper historic times um, bronze age which is the ancient indian civilization of dholavira lothal then you showed the medieval and as well as modern history sites as well so you were able to cover quite a broad range the structure was also very good so you showed the states their maps their um, capitals languages so overall i think within about six minutes you were able to cover a lot thank you very much thank you thank you, thank you. shall we move to the next team yep so i will stop sharing and uh, Next team is um, Team Jadunath. So please go ahead. Who is going to present? Sejal. Okay, um. Sejal. Sejal, did you say you are going to present? Yeah. Okay, okay.
How do you present? So in the Zoom uh, bar, you will see uh, there is something called share screen. There is a yeah. in middle, there is a button called share screen. Click on share screen. Then it will show you the screens. Mm -hmm. So choose the presentation screen and just click on it and say share. That's it. Share if you need it. Can you see it? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, Uttar Pradesh. Some historical cities in Uttar Pradesh include Lucknow, pra Prayagraj, Varanasi, and Mathura. Some of the main geograph geographical features in Uttar Pradesh include the, G the Ganga River, Yamuna River, Indo Gangetic Plain, and Baro Sagar Tal. This culture has the roots of Hindi and Urdu literature, music, fine arts, drama, and cinema. Languages in, this, um, in Uttar Pradesh are Hindi and Urdu, and Kathak is their dance. Some of their music includes folk and Odissi. Some important historical monuments are the Taj Mahal, Chota Imamra, Shaheed, Smarak, and the Victoria Memorial. Ancient history sites in Uttar Pradesh include Bhateshwar, Nath Mandir, Ancient Mound of Koldi, and Ancient Mound of Mahagra, and Kashi Vishwara Temple. Rajasthan. Historical cities in Rajasthan include Jodhpur, Udaipur, and Jaipur. Some geographical features in Rajasthan include the Thar Desert, Aravali, Aravali Range, Uni River, Guru Shikhar, Chambal, Chambal. The culture of Rajasthan has Gumar and Kabbalia dance and folk music. The most common languages are Marwari, Malvi, and Dundari. Some historical monuments include the Hanuman Pole, Diwaniyam, Akbar's Fort and Tripolia Gate. Ancient historical sites in Rajasthan include the Kumbhalag Fort, Chanbari, and the Vijay Stamba. Next is Suresh. Uh, the the features of Himachal Pradesh uh, are it is the northernmost range of the Himalayas, also called the Great or Inner Himalayas. It includes the most prominent Himalayan peaks. It, co it consists of granite and many glaciers descend from Himadri. Uh, the average range of mountains found here is 6,000 meters. Um, uh, languages in Himachal Pradesh are Punjabi, Tibetan, Nepali, Do Dogri, Urdu, and Kashmiri. Historical monuments of Himachal Pradesh are uh, Ra Rashtrati Nawaz, uh, a grand, which is a grand uh, palace in Shimla, Hadimba Devi Temple, which is which has ancient looks and beliefs, uh, Dabo Mon Monastery, uh, which is located in uh, amidst valleys, Kangra Fort, one of the uh, oldest known forts, uh, Champathavi Temple, which is a f which has fascinating architecture, rock cut uh, temple, and eighth century monument. And but so the uh, dances are a very vital part of tribal life. It reflects the culture and the tradition of Himachal Pradesh. Hardly any festivity is here is celebrated without dancing. Some of the dance forms, uh, like Dulshul, Darveshi, Drodi, Dev Nritya, Rakshas Nritya, Dangi, Lasa, Nati, and Nagas are danced all over the region. Himachal Pradesh folk music features a wide range wide range of drums, including uh, Damama, uh, Dama, Dama, uh, Damang, um, Gaiju, Doru, Donza, Nagara, Dolku, and much others. Uh, the historical sites in Himachal Pradesh are Chamba, uh, 
and Kangra Art Museum. Uttarakhand. Dehradun is the summer capital and Gar Singh is the winter capital of Uttarakhand. The main cities of Uttarakhand are Dehradun, Haridwar, Rishikesh, Nainital, which is the hard part, Mussoori, Uttarakashi, Rudra Prayag, Uruki, etc. Some geographical features are the southern Himalayan slope, Nanda Devi, the Gangotri Glacier in the Uttarkashi district, and uh, Yamunotri, a Ganga River, and the uh, Yamuna River, Bhagirati and Alakanda rivers. Some historical cities uh, in Uttarakhand are Dwarahat and Chakutia, uh, Narendra Nagar, Nainital, Mussoori, and the different languages that are spoken in Uttarakhand are Hindi, Garhwali, Kamalani, Jansari, and Urdu. Uh, in Uttarakhand, they do special folk dances for different occasions, uh, like the Cholia Potia, the Champuli, the Barada, and Nati dance, etc. The cultural festival is Komela which happens every 12 years and and the next time it's going to happen is going to be in Hardwar 2021. The culture is Kumani, uh, the in for the inhabitants of the Kumaon region and Garwali for the inhabitants of the Garwal region cultures. And some important uh, historical and religious monuments in Uttarakhand are Padnayan Temple, Kedarnath Temple, Pitoragar Fort, Banasur Kila, and Rudranath Temple, Sita Bani Temple, Tim Cor and Tim Corbett National Park. And as you can see in the images, there are, there's Kedarna Temple, Temple and Diana Temple. Some ancient history sites are, are the Katar Mala San Temple, the Kalsi and Guru Ram Rai, the Daibar Guru Dwara, and the Baj. Bajnat Dwar Dwarahat and that's it. Haryana. Haryana has many, many historical sites. In that state, there are many tourist sites as well as historical areas like the Asgard Fort and Kapal Mokan. It's also recognized by the ASI, which is um, the Architect Supplemental Instruction. Some of the geographical features there, um, to the northeast of Haryana is Shivalik Hills and Gagar Yamuna Plain forming the largest part of the state. Towards the south, there is a semi-desert sandy plain and Aravadi Hills in the south. There is one river located in the area that's called Yamuna River. It, Haryana shares a boundary or border with several Indian states like Rajasthan, Delhi, Uttar Pradesh, Punjab, and Himachal Pradesh. For culture, enjoyment, and appeal, Haryana is known for its hookah paddy fields, cows, and its color filled with One of the most popular foods in Haryana, is, um, which is also called the home of gods, is um, kakri kipadni. Um, kakri is a very common vegetable in that state. 
is a variety of cucumber that resembles a small brown colored lemon. If it's consumed as a, as a chutney and it, um, most of the time, or even subsi, and it's cooked along with potatoes and other vegetables. Like any other region of India, Haryana has its own traditional form of music and dance that's quite popular with people among the globe. The famous traditional dance forms include Gumar, Gangar, and Korea dance. The ancient folk music of Haryana um, is mainly two types, which is classical and country style. Some of the important historical monuments um, are, um, since Haryana is one of the most um, is famous for many things, it's one of the wealthiest states in India. Most of the occupations are of farmers in the field of agriculture. Multiple historic battles were fought there. One event widely recognized is the Mahabha. These are um, just um, pictures. The, the one on the right side is a picture of a Haryana, and on the left is one of the um, important historical monuments. Ancient prehistoric sites, um, so archaeologist sites in Haryana have revealed in interesting facts about the culture and lifestyle of Asian civilizations. A lot of the cities in the state, a, lo a lot of the sites in the state are associated with Indus Valley civilization and they give a clear idea about their com um, commendability developed society. Remains of township and other articles have been excavated at different places that also help in tracing the course of development of old civilizations along with their decline. Various forts, temples, palaces, and burial narrate numerous concealed aspects of Indian history. Some of the sites include Bidana, a small village located in Fatehabad district, and Banwali is an archaeologist site belonging to Indus Valley civilization. Um, overall, Haryana is among the northernmost states in India and adjacent to the national capital, Delhi. By its neighboring states include Uttar Pradesh in the east, Punjab in the west, Himachal Pradesh in the north, and finally Rajasthan in the south. Historically, being the very agrarian state that it is, today Haryana is a well-developed state. Haryana is one of the 28 states in India located in the northern part of the country. If it was carved out of the, it was carved out, out of the east, Punjab, on November 1st, 1966, 1966, on a linguistic basis. Chandigarh is the state capital. Faridabad, in national capital region, is the most populous city of the state, and Gurugram is the leading financial hub of the. N NCR with major fortune, 500 companies located in it. Haryana has six administrative div divisions, 22 districts, 72 subdivisions, 92 revenue tassels, and 50 sub tassels, 140 community development blocks, 154 cities and towns, 6,848 villages, and 6,222 villages, um, Bantiyats. Hello? Can't hear anything. Go ahead. Can you please? Yes, sir. You may be speaking on mute. Wasn't the summary at the end? Yeah, Haryana is over. Punjab is someone else. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Punjab is Neil. Um, it's already been like past six minutes. Can somebody else speak for Punjab then in the team? Move on. In um, actually more than 15 minutes. What? Um, yeah, it's been a pretty long time. Yeah. L I can, yeah, go I ahead, can, go ahead, please do that, yeah. But don't read everything, summarize it. Yeah, okay. Uh, in Punjab, Amritsar is a uh, historical, uh, very historical cities. Some of the historical sites in Amritsar are the Golden Temple that was built in 1577 and is the heart of Oh, of Sikhism. Akul Takat, oh. a seat of power in the Golden Akul Takat is 
one of the she is the seat of power in the Golden Temple, and block a border, a border now. Of, I was trying to figure out. Of, of India oh my and God. built in 1959, and some prehistoric prehistoric sites are Sankol, and it's a of Buddhist settlement also called Uchapin. Uh, Rup, Rupnagar is a is an Indus settlement near. Sutlej River and Dober uh Dobaha is another Indus set settlement in Punjab that is also one of the all oldest inhabited areas in the world. The rivers in Punjab are is Saurish uh, Saurish is it possible for you to not read everything? Just say the first line then. Don't read everything. Just bullet where the, you have a bullet. Just read that line. Okay. Uh, rivers, the Sutlej bees, that tell them, Chenab, uh, all part of the Indus River. Mountains, Shivalik Mountains, are some mountains in Punjab. Coast, uh, Punjab is a landlocked state. No coasts. Uh, culture, not done yet. Languages, the official language of Punjab is Punjabi. People also speak Hindi, Urdu, Saiki, and Hindko. Dances, Pangra, and Gita are two dances of Punjab. Music, Patiala, Gharana, Ghazala, Domri, and Kayal. Ladakh. Ladakh is Ladakh's historical monuments are mostly monasteries, a building or build of many buildings occupied by a community of monks living under religious vows. Historical sites in Ladakh are in Nubra Valley, where a historic hunter site was found. Ladakh's geography is that it's one of the highest regions in the world. Its natural geography mostly consists of natural valleys. Ladakh also has a mountain range. Um, culture. Ladakh has a very colorful culture centered around Buddhism. It has a dance for royals known as the Shondal dance. Ladakhi, Tibetan, Urdu, and Bolti are Ladakh's official languages. And that's it. So I'm going to skip the feedback thing because um, uh, you took more than 20 minutes just for this presentation. So, um, um, so team Jadunath, um, I think uh, I will give a quick uh, feedback. I think you need to plan your presentation. Maybe you did not do rehearsal, but um, if um, you planned it, you could have compressed the information a little bit more, but you did a good job. You informed us a lot about um, uh, North India quite a bit, Northwest India uh, uh, very well. So thank you very much for the presentation. Okay. So we shall move to team Majumdar, Hello. who is going to share the screen. Please, again, uh, if, if, you are, um, if you are going to elaborate and actually read everything which is on the screen, uh, it will take a lot of time. So don't do that. Just yeah, summarize and yeah, uh, keep, um, keep uh, time in your mind. You have a limited time. Can we, okay. can, we have like, can we have like two minutes to figure out the screen sharing thing? Because who is going to share the screen? Um, I'm gonna try to, and then I just found an option to share. Who is it. speaking? I don't know who is speaking. Uh, Announce Ranveer. yourself. Ranveer is speaking right now. Ranveer. So, just, even if your notes is showing, don't feel embarrassed. Just share it. That's fine. Can you see the presentation. Click on present. That's all. I did. Okay. Start. We can see your screen. Yeah, you see the presentation, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, first, present. Go to the start, go to the start. Wait, you're on the like fourth one. Okay. Should we start? 
Should we start? Please. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome to our presentation on Eastern and Northeastern India. Culture. There's a lot of culture. There's a lot of culture. There is a lot of culture in northeastern and eastern India. The religions are Hinduism, Christianity, Islam, and Buddhism. Some foods are, that are eaten are car. It is papaya, and it is it is eaten for lunch in Assam. A lot of meat is also eaten. Sanpiao is a street snack found in Mizoram. It is rice porridge with added ingredients. The festivals in northeastern and eastern India are Bihu, which is celebrated in Assam. It celebrates the tea gardens in there. The Zero Festival is a music festival celebrated in Arunachal Pradesh. The Hornbill Festival is dedicated to the heritage of Nagaland. Eastern and Northeastern India has a wide variety of dances and music. The types of dances are Bihu, Chao, Odissi, and Manipuri. Bihu is an ancient folk dance done in villages. Odyssey is from Odisha and it is very graceful and it tells stories. The music of these regions are Bhajan, Panchama, Odyssey, Tumri, and Dadra. Tumri is a style of music. It is devotional in nature and the lyrics are usually in dialects of Hindi called Avadi and Bhojpuri Bhasha. Artists are Sujata Mahopra, Gurupitan Singh, Angarag Mahanta, and Ujjaini Roy. India has many beautiful music and dance forms. As per my research on the internet, I came across this information about the historical monuments in eastern and northeastern India. The Konark Sun Temple was built in 1250 AD to represent his win over the Muslim invaders after having it destroyed many times. It is also dedicated to Lord Surya in his chariot. The Mahabodhi temple was built in the 3rd century and is the first Buddhist temple built from bricks. The Jagannath Puri was built in 1078 by King Jodha Ganga Deva and later finished by his son Ananga Bhima Deva. Fun facts. The Mahabodhi temple is one of the oldest brick temples in India. European sailors that went by the temples called the Mahabodhi temple the Black Pagoda and the Jagannath Puri the White Pagoda. As per local stories, Narasimha Deva had hired a chief architect called Bisu Maharana to build the temple. Both Dayas are in a village with this site. This is where Gautama Buddha is said to have attained enlightenment. Palashi is a village on the Hooghly River in West Bengal. There was actually a battle forces to Siraj and his army, but unfortunately British won. Pandua is in Mali district in West Bengal. It was also it was a lost city until someone found it and then was put to study by Alexander Cunningham. It was described as many things and was the capital of Bengal Sultanate. There are eight states in northeastern India. They include Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, Manipur, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Nagaland, Sikkim, and Tripura. Uh, the population as of each state in 2019 is listed above. Two fun facts about Northeastern India is that the longest and shortest river islands in the world are located in Assam, and in just Nagaland there are 36 languages and 17 tribes. There are two locations, Kaldua and Nampakatalembi. Kaldua is an archaeological site and a prehistoric site that was made in 6,500 uh, 6, BC. What makes it so special is that they found homes that are designed like modern homes. It is in eastern India uh, and is situated in a valley next to Bilan River and a village called Devat. It is made by Neolithic men and is including as one of the Neolithic state is, uh, sites. Nakpakatalembi is a prehistoric site, also an archaeological site, that was made in 2000 BC. It is located in a valley in northeast India in Manipur. It is a first colonized, it was first colonized by Neolithic men, just like Kaldaba. So when archaeological uh, archaeologists dug up the ground, they found Neolithic men's skulls underground. 
that's what makes it so special. The official languages of Eastern and North and Northeast India are Assamese, Bengali, Bodo, Garo, Kasi, Kokbarak, Gorkhali, and Maidi. Assamese evolved from the Indo-Aryan Magdi Prakrit, which evolved from Vedic Sanskrit. Sanskrit is one of the most important and sacred languages. Bengali derived from Brahmi, the Eastern variety, which is one of the true Indian scripts. Here are fun facts about East India. Momos are vegetable or meat-filled dumplings which are popular in East India. There are over 30 languages spoken in Arunachal Pradesh. Golden silk is only made in Assam. Meghalaya gets the most annual rainfall in India. Malinog in Meghalaya is the cleanest village in India. Next slide, please. The game polo originated in Manipur. Nagaland is home to the ghost pepper, a spicy pepper that once held the world record for spiciest pepper. More than 80% of Sikkim is forest. Tripura has free education for those in the age group of 6 to 14. Very beneficial. Thank you for listening to our presentation. Here are the references and websites that we used. Thank you. Thank you, team. Majumdar, uh, good job. And, good job. Uh, awesome presentation. Awesome presentation. Uh, you, you more or less were within your time, just uh, slightly over. And uh, you, within that short time, were able to summarize and cover a lot of information. Uh, in interest of time, because we are behind, um, I shall skip uh, the um, audience questions. But a few quick things. So, for example, um, somebody talking about um, the historical sites mentioned uh, a site in Uttar Pradesh as being part of uh, this region. So that uh, perhaps is not accurate. Uh, the um, the other historical sites that you mentioned were accurate. The Bengali language somebody said derived from Brahmi script. So Bengali is a language. Brahmi is a script. So Bengali language also, just like Asamiya, uh, as uh, somebody rightly mentioned, came from Magadhi Prakrit. So Prakrit um, is um, a form of uh, language, just like Sanskrit. Prakrit is a sister of Sanskrit or maybe daughter of Sanskrit. And uh, all the Indian, most of the Indian languages um, derived from Prakrit. And Bengali, just like Asamiya, also derived from a Prakrit called Magadhi Prakrit. The Brahmi is a script. So majority of Indian scripts, uh, including uh, Devanagari and Tamil uh, scripts, uh, came from the Brahmi script. And uh, Bengali script, of course, uh, also came from Brahmi, uh, one of the Eastern versions of Brahmi script. So Brahmi is a script and Bengali is a language. So that uh, is another point. Anybody? Um, from the coach team, uh, do you want to mention something for Team Majumdar? Good job, guys. Um, claps for you. Thank you. So, um, with that, let's come to the Team Nilkantha. So, who is going to share the screen? Yay! Me. I'm going to share it. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Um, so this is Team Nila Kanta, which is the southern region of India. States and historical sites. The southern region of India consists of five states, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Karnataka, Kerala, and Tamil Nadu. South India also consists of three territories, Puducherry, Lakshadweep, and Andaman and Nicobar. There are many historical sites in South India, like the temples of Mahabalipuram, 
the monuments of Hampi, the Niuguri Mountain Railway, the famous Shola temples, Vijupar, and many more. Next slide, please. The geographical features. South India has many beautiful geographical features. Some of them are the Western Ghats, the Kaveri River, the Nilgiri Mountains, Andaman and Nicobar Islands, the Krishna River, the Godavari River, and many more. Culture and languages. South Indian culture is very famous for its food, clothing, and dancing. Many South Indians eat their food on banana leaves. Rice and coconut are commonly eaten by South Indians. South Indian women usually wear a sari and South Indian men usually wear a sarong. There are four official languages of South India, Kannada, Tamil, Telugu, and Malayalam. Telugu is the most spoken language of South India, followed by Tamil. Dance and music. There are many dances in South India like Bharatnatyam, Kuriyattam, Karakatram, Kuchipudi, uh, Kathakali, Mohiniyattam, and many more. South Indian music is usually referred to as referred as Carnatic music. Some famous composers in South India are Purandara Dasa, da, Dasa ka, Kanaka Dasaru, um, Dikshata. Uh, Shyama Shastri and Swati Tiruna. Important historical monuments. Some important historical monuments in South India are Archaeological Museum of Hampi, Arika Medu, Badami, Queen Bath, Belor, Kavala Caves. Elephant Stables, Kerala Museum, and Salakad. Prehistoric or any ancient sites. A couple amazing prehistoric sites are Meenakshi Temple in Tamil Nadu and Hampi Village in Karnataka. Meenakshi Temple is dedicated to Goddess Parvati. It's unknown for when the date of the temple was founded, but it is said that uh, Lord Indra created it probably about 2,500 years ago. Hampi Village is the ancient city of Vijayanagar, which is the capital of the Vijayanagar Empire in ancient India. Many kings ruled in Vijayanagar in the 14th, 16th century, and it's known for its brilliant Hindu temples. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you, team Nilakantha. I think uh, you did very, very well. You covered a lot of ground. Um, we were able to summarize your points fairly well, and you were within the time. So a uh, few quick uh, points from my side. The South India of all the regions within India is so much full of preserved history. What I mean by preserved history is that Unlike, uh, let's say, Western India or Northern India, or to a large extent, Eastern India, where India has been um, target of continuous invasions, um, continuous struggle for survival from the uh, forces uh, inimical to Indian culture and civilization. Uh, those regions were not able to protect their monuments, temples, sites of pilgrimage as well as the South India has done. So South India is therefore um, such a rich repository Google of Indian history. So that you should um, kind of um, find it um, a struggle to summarize which site to mention, which site not to mention. Every village, every town, perhaps, of uh, Tamil Nadu or Karnataka, perhaps, is full of such sites which are um, official, proper historical sites. Um, so um, I think, uh, given that challenge, you were able to summarize very well. Uh, it I can understand must have been a challenge for you. Uh, 
um, to cover so much of ground. So good job, Team Nilkant. Very well done. Claps for you. Can everybody clap for them? With that, uh, we come to the fifth team, Team Sita Ram, who is oh, going to share the screen. Questions. Oh, Brashita uh, will share the screen. Yeah, I'll be sharing my screen. One second. Pink. E. Let me know if you can see my screen. Yeah, we can. Oh, but it got sick, sick right here. <laughs> Are you on mute? <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. And team is this going to be going over Central Asia and some of its features? So the first slide. I want to see your presentation. It's going to be said by Shrithik. So Shrithik, you can go ahead. Uh, so the states in Central India are Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Uttar Pradesh, and Uttaranchal. It says is Uttaranchal, but actually, wait, wait, go back. Yeah. And Uttaranchal, uh, and the historical cities in Madhya Pradesh are Kujuraho, Bhojpur, Saad, Sanchi, Abarakantak, and Chitrakut. In Uttar Pradesh, there's Jansi, Fatehpur Sikri, Amridwan, Aligarh, and Mathura. In Uttaranchal, we have Narendra Nagar, Lohagat, and Dwarahat, uh, Bansur, and Bageshwar. In Chhattisgarh, we have Bilaspur, um, Ratanpur, Malahar, Rajpur, and Jangir. Next slide, please. So, Soham, you can see your slide. Yeah. So, um, the geographical features of Central India are. Vindhya, a mountain range, it starts from Madhya Pradesh, then and goes to Gujarat, then goes to Uttar Pradesh, then to Bihar, and then to Chhattisgarh. Then the Narmada River um, is where it goes to uh, Madhya Pradesh, to Gujarat, then to Maharashtra. The Beta River go, from, goes to Madhya Pradesh, to Uttar Pradesh. The Maikal Hill, it's in Chhattisgarh. The Shipra, River, the Shipra River is in Madhya Pradesh. Okay. Next slide, please. Oh, yeah. And here's like a, um, here are the pictures of the geographical features I listed on the previous slide. So the culture, languages, dance, and music of Central India. In Central India, Chhattisgarhi, Hindi, Avadi, Rajbasha, Bundeli, Bageli, Kanauji, Hindustani, and Bhojpuri, Urdu, Malvi, Nimadi, Garwali, Kumani, Janasri, Danu, Kondi, Katlo, Bini, Nihali, and Korku are the languages spoken in Central India. In Central India, Chhattisgarh is famous for Dar or Kosa. This is a very common silk in saris for women in Central India. Pandavani is a type of folk singing. It is mainly in Chhattisgarh. Kajuraho Dance Festival in Madhya Pradesh is a popular event that invites all dance form perform performers of India. The week-long performances take place around the ancient temple Kajuraho. Folk music is very common in Uttarakhand. There is a diverse mix of people, so there is a variety of instruments played. Some of the instruments are the dole, bankora, and the rasing. As you can see, the culture, languages, dance, and music vary. 
Many people worship Lord Rama in Central India and come to the Eid. Central India is a very beautiful region that attracts many tourists because of the famous te Kedarnath Temple in Uttarakhand. These are um, pictures of Central India's cultures, dance, and music. So that's the the first picture is the silk used in the saris. Second one is Pandavani. The third one is Kajuraho Festival, and the fourth one is Uttarakhand folk music. And the next one is important historic moment, monuments. Oh, okay. So important historic monuments. Some important historical monuments located in central India are Urvai Gate. The Urvai Gate is located in Gwalior in Madhya Pradesh. It was made into the 13th century to protect the Gwalior Fort. The Urvai Gate is a Jain monument that has enormous structures that were carved out of rock. It depicts figures sitting in uh, meditating positions. The Gwalior Fort is in Gwalior, Madhya Pradesh. It was constructed in 1486 by Man Singh Tamar, who ruled over Gwalior for over 30 years. And the Bimbeka rock shelters are located in Madhya Pradesh and have several prehistoric paintings that show day-to-day -day life of the cave people. So the first one is uh, a painting of the Bimbeka rock shelter. Uh, the second is a Gwalior fort and the third is showing the figures in the Urvai gate. So ancient history sites in central India. So Soham is going to be saying this one. Yeah, two, two of the main historical sites are the Man Mandir and Gujri Mahal. Gujri Mahal was built uh, by Queen Mirgna Yeni and her husband. Today, this site is used to remember her and her influences. The Man Mandir was built by Man Singh Tomar. This site was built in re remembrance of Man Singh Tomar. And as you can see, there's a picture of the Man Mandir, the, a statue of Man Singh Tomar, and the Gujri Mahal, and a statue of Queen, Queen Mirgna Yeni. Thank you. Great job. So, uh, a couple of questions I from me. I didn't get a chance to read. I didn't get a chance to read. Okay. Uh, go ahead. No, the thing is, uh, he has not got uh, assigned. Uh, I don't know what was the gap. So, we, he has put all the homeworks in spite of it. Uh, uh, he did not get the yeah, got the assigned uh, thing to speak, so he was upset. Who is this? Sarthak. Sarthak. And uh, I was I was following up. Uh, you would have seen my messages from the beginning. You are Sarthak's mom. Yeah. yeah. So Sarthak, uh, you are. Uh, you, have you prepared something? I asked for his video, but I couldn't find it anywhere. So, Sarthak, uh, there, there is so much communication going on. So, uh, in, in the team, uh, I think uh, your team, uh, Sitaram team, has been um, doing preparation on a daily basis, I suppose. So, yeah, we are you not in touch with them? We only had one meet because of communication, but I kept putting messages in WhatsApp and the Google Classroom stream, and I'm not sure if anyone saw it. No, well, I saw the Google Classroom messages. Is it from parents group or the students group or you have formed a different uh, WhatsApp group? I, I feel there is some gap and uh, uh, I uh, like uh, uh, Sarthak does not have his own mobile number. So I was following up and uh, Mrs. Wani knows it. Uh, and uh, there is a gap. That was me. That's my mom's phone actually. So that was me. So, uh, ma'am, would you volunteer to be mentor for Sitaram team? Because we don't have a mentor for Sitaram team. And that's perhaps a uh, But, uh, um, Sarthak, uh, what we will do, uh, we will uh, let me work with you offline. Uh, please call me. You have my number. You will make a presentation next week on your own, okay? We will okay. we will work with, with that. Okay? okay? Thank you. Uh, sorry that you did not get a chance today. It's okay. Okay. 
so but, but back to the presentation that was just made um, i think uh, overall a good um, presentation um, central india is so rich in history that um, spans like bhimbetka for example um, which is uh, 11000 plus years old more old than that to the uh, medieval history modern history it is the site which is has witnessed uh, so many wars and it has uh, such a rich um, historical uh, landscape which is hard to cover in 4 minutes and your attempt therefore was very good couple of things i observed uh, some of you spoke about uttarakhand so uttarakhand is for sure not a part of central india uttarakhand is um, very much in north india it's in himalayas so um, that's one thing uh, other thing is um, you could have uh, perhaps picked up a uh, little more on the medieval history so uh, madhya pradesh is uh, so much full of um, historical forts and um, in fact chatisgarh is another place its name itself is chatisgarh which means 36 forts so uh, for the forts outside of uh, rajasthan and and uh, maharashtra uh, if there is any place well known for it is the central india so uh, please study a little bit more about central india but overall great job done and can everybody clap for team sitaram you guys forgot some important thing um sarvesh sir i have one question i saw that um uttar pradesh came in like three different regions which region is it in that's a good question and um <laughs> so what do others feel i'm thinking maybe uttar uttar pradesh is very big maybe it's just divided into the three parts <laughs> yeah well if it's divided it's in three Northern parts area. it's li- it's literally called the northern state though the meaning of uttar pradesh is northern state then so yeah why is it- Yeah, why is it like so, different regions then? So, so uh, okay. So let's understand this. These directionalities, Uttar, Dakshin, North, South, East, West, etc., are relative, quite uh, honestly. So, uh, for example, there is a state called Pashchim Bengal, Western Bengal. Now, it is called Pashchim Bengal because there is another Bengal, or used to be another Bengal. called eastern bengal which is now bangladesh now they changed bangladesh changed its name to bangladesh it is no longer eastern bengal or earlier it was called eastern pakistan and west bengal is left with this tag called west and a normal um, you know person does who does not know too much um, about geography of india would wonder uh, how come this state which is very much in the overall east of india called pashchim bengal or west bengal so it's confusing uh, similarly um, uttar pradesh i think this name itself is very arbitrary uttar to what uh, of course there are other states which are as much um, in in the north so why should this state be called uttar pradesh and that also um, is, has a history earlier its name was uh, united province it was not called uttar pradesh up stood for united province during the british time and when uh, india attained uh, its freedom and uh, the states were organized then the people of uttar pradesh said that we don't like this name united province so we want to change our name to something else so because the up was kind of um, famous they just changed the name to uttar pradesh so that's how this name came i agree with you it's it 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 is uh, somewhat in the east and little bit in the north so it is between north and eastern india i would say but um, um good point whoever asked raise that point good point raised so what i will do now we i think we have only 13 minutes left so i don't want to start a new topic what let me talk about is um how to make a good presentation so i was just noting down a few points which i want to share with you and i don't have a powerpoint for it so um, i will just i just jotted down a few points quickly let me share my screen and uh, talk about it 
you can see my screen mm -hmm. so in your career in your life as you um, go to move to the next uh, level of your schooling and once you finish your schooling go into college start doing a job get into a career lot of opportunities will come for you to make presentations and presentation is nothing but talking to people with a point of view so you of course have done a lot of work uh, you have read material on the internet maybe you read uh, through some books some of the content and now you will stand in front of audience and tell them about uh, the subject that you are talking to them on sometimes these presentations are going to be more of uh, educational informative thing such as the example today you all made presentations which were about information you were telling people about something sometimes those presentations may be what is known as persuasive presentations where you want to um, motivate people for doing something whatever that something might be and there are other ways uh, other types of presentations such as where you are countering somebody else's point of view you are criticizing something so in general however any good presentation has a certain pattern there are a few important um aspects that make the difference between a great presentation and not so great presentation and i think uh, fresh from having finished a, uh, uh, your effort in making a presentation i think uh, we should introspect and learn from this experience yeah so all the great things you did you should repeat them all the not so great things you did identify them carefully analyze them what could have been done better and not repeat uh, those things do it differently next time okay so first thing can you mute yourself please all of you so the first thing that a great presentation has is a great structure any good presentation it can be a personal presentation done by one person or it can be a team presentation doesn't matter any great presentation is having a good structure and structure uh, i think most of you um, at, at least um, would know this have heard this in your schools any speech or any story or any time you stand up and talk to people to the audience has an opening body and conclusion and that is true for these presentations also so first thing is the very first sentence that uh, you should speak should introduce yourself and introduce the topic here in case of team presentations it may be little um, kind of a distracting if um, let's say five people have to present then uh, first person spoke um, second person came on again introduce himself that will be disturbing uh, distracting so um, in team presentation just uh, in the beginning say everybody's name uh, and say uh, your purpose but definitely um, any great presentation any great book any great essay starts with announcing yourself and announcing your purpose these two things must be set up front okay once you have announced yourself and declared your topic here is what i am going to do it can be just done in one sentence my name is sarvesh tiwari and in today's class we are going to talk about a b and c that's it that is how you should ideally start a structured presentation there is only one exception to this that exception is if you have a great um, attention um, capturing short story or joke or audio visual um, element which uh, you can sometimes use so if you have a joke which immediately captures everybody's attention you can start your presentation with that joke it could also be a story or anecdote something like hey yesterday i was playing in the playground and do you know what i um, saw i saw a lizard and i'm going to today talk about the different types of lizards which are um, found in the north american plains something like that so you started with an anecdote which immediately will capture your audience 
a good presentation should start with capturing the attention and then uh, coming to announcing and introducing yourself but if you don't have that eye capturing attention capturing start that's okay then simply start with topic and yourself that's number one once you have done that then your presentation should have very very clearly defined points and those points should not be more than three ideally i mean there can be some exceptions but generally your main point should be within one two three in this case uh, the first point can be uh, you talk about the geography the contents of your region so my uh, region has these five states and uh, here are their capitals that can be one point then uh, second point again I'm, I'm just making up examples to um, tell you how the structure should look like second point could have been that um, here are the important geographical features like rivers mountains deserts etc third can be then here are the cultural aspects etc sometimes uh, this uh, main part is prescribed to you you don't have control over it uh, such as uh, the case was today so if you have been prescribed a format this main points thing uh, th you already know the flow okay follow that now great presenters great storytellers great authors they have this literary technique called transition so when you're moving from point a to point b in what you're saying you should uh, imagine and think of some clever way of transitioning it should not be abrupt that yes in the previous slide you spoke about cities and states and next slide you suddenly started talking about mountains and rivers so you can think of uh, if nothing else comes to mind then uh, just a simple statement saying having told you about the states in southern india let me now tell you about the rivers and mountains uh, and ghats which are found in the south india so that way audience moves with you because in your mind you have switched from first slide to second slide but audience has not yet moved with you if you say something like this then they have moved so that's the simple way of transition statement but uh, as you get more experienced with working with presentations you will come up with more clever ways of doing it it can be uh, again uh, very quick uh, anecdote joke or something like that so um, that's how you transition and lastly once your presentation comes to an end you summarize whatever you have told them in the end always don't just say i'm done that's not a good ending you say and therefore so that's how you start and therefore uh, we saw today how south india is culturally historically very rich region of india which constitutes five important states and several uh, important historical sites thank you for listening to us so something like that so when you conclude your presentation and if it is a team presentation then whoever is speaking last should simply summarize the everything you have told in last uh, several slides in two or three sentences uncle okay. yeah it's like someone trying to tell you something uh, they can wait I, i already told you nobody interrupts anybody else i will pause i will take questions okay so now i will uh, you know the structure part i am done so i will pause here take questions go ahead are we going to be having other group projects like this with our group there will be lot of projects so this team will remain constant you should by now have developed friendship i hope and uh, know how to reach to each other and i hope you people have uh, some way of communicating and, uh, you know this was the first project so what is known as teething pains is okay but next time you should have a far more smooth communication you know who to reach out for what how um, and and divide work among yourself and be able to do a better project so answer is yes there will be more projects like this so moving on um, second important thing is you know your content so obviously you have to do thorough research uh, whatever topic it is you are preparing for and i am not talking only about uh, historical subjects it can be related to your school uh, something you are presenting in your class 
or maybe once uh, you grow up and you do your uh, jobs then a job also whatever that thing is that you are talking about you must prepare well and preparing will include lot of research lot of uh, stuff that goes on before you even start creating these slides you have to read you have to find the references you need to do your analysis uh, you need to do all that hard work and once you have done your hard work then come up with that main body what are the main points that i'm going to talk about those can't be the entire book that you read you just type it up in the slides no you cannot do that if you do that uh, first of all you will never finish in time and second of all you will lose interest of audience so if you lost the audience interest how will you uh, be able to educate them inform them or persuade them so therefore you need to really think what i'm putting on slide is it important is it first of all really really important if it is not all that important skip it you don't have to put everything on your slide only put what is absolutely important and even that even within what is important always remember what's the point what is it that i'm going to really tell so in case of uh, western india do i really need to say uh, 100 of uh, forts there are of course hundreds of forts do i list them out all their names no that will not serve the purpose you simply say there are 100 forts that's the point if you list all the 100 forts and not say that there are 100 forts you did not make a good point okay so therefore again i will repeat is the point really important if it is not really important then don't or you can necessarily put it here no other way because it's not like a dumb and stupid it's like you said you are very smart you i have muted people people forget to mute themselves they are it's say 40 people on this call please mute yourself when you are not unless you don't you know anyway so once again i was saying really be critical of what you are putting do not put anything that uh, you have read only put what is absolutely important for the audience to know if you tell 100 things people will not be able to capture everything you are telling them they have limited attention span so tell them three things which are important which they uh, we can really consume and take it back and summarize yourself so you practice of um kind of uh, being on the point and not going beyond your point and within that point try to say it with as few words as possible minimum number of words okay next one is about the slides so slide uh, again you people are very young you are just starting out uh, for some of you it may be your first presentation and you all did a fabulous job let me tell you that it's a brave uh, act to be able to present in front of an audience of uh, about 40 people you did that the great achievement and uh, i think uh, as you move forward and make more presentations uh, remember slide is a technology it is an aid it is there to support you being able to make the point you are trying to make slides are there to support you slides are not there uh, for the audience to be able to capture everything themselves slides are not the speech you are the main point of the speech we are all listening to you not to the slides therefore make sure that the slide does not have the whole thing it has only very small number of words if possible no words just have a picture which can um, kind of uh, keep audience focused on the screen while you have your speech or your notes uh, which you can refer to um, and then speak so that's an important thing your talking points things which you are going to talk about should not be on the slide itself you may have noted down on a note a notebook or a piece of paper or there are technologies available uh, where you can have a speaker note separately don't put it on the slide itself okay so that's one thing and last thing for a great presentation is rehearsal you have to practice 
So um, initially, um, you know, before you become an expert, you should properly rehearse, open the slide, uh, assume that there's an audience in front of you. In fact, try to ask your parents or your siblings to listen to you and make a presentation. Do it twice or thrice before um, doing the actual presentation. And in case it is a team presentation, then it's uh, not a bad idea to um, coordinate with the team and do it together so that there are no surprises. In fact, um, it's essential for um, uh, presentations such as the today's for you to have rehearsed. Okay, so that's the last one. Any questions about um, whatever I told about good presentation? You, you can unmute yourself and ask. No question. Okay, great. Um, uh, go ahead. Um, could you like make all the font a little smaller as well? If you take a screenshot and keep all of this, it's really useful. Uh, yeah, I think so. Like you can make it like kind of small, so I can use it on yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay. Any other comment, thought? If not, uh, I think once again, I want to really, really say thank you for doing this presentation. You guys did a fabulous job. Okay. So you should be proud of yourself for having done it. And there will be more projects. Some of them may not be presentations. So next project may be a writing project. So you have to produce as a team um, uh, a proper historical essay. And we'll talk about that. But uh, this project, well done. So I think uh, we just um, ran out of time, could not complete everything. We are behind by one full class of 90 minutes. This unit uh, we were supposed to finish today and we are like half done. So um, can we do an extra class on Wednesday? Uh, I have uh, another batch um, class, extra class. I would like to merge both batches on that one and uh, do this um, together. What we had to talk thinking? about um, some important stuff about Indus Valley and then uh, Vedic uh, literature. Uh, can you send okay. then, um, if there is okay. class, can you just put it in the What box? time would this class be exactly? What time on uh, I will I will share all that detail um, um, because it will be big class. There will be another batch, so it will be more like 70 students. So I don't, I can't control the time. I will figure out what's the best time. It will be late evening on Wednesday, something like 8 p.m. Oh, wow. Eastern, 8 p.m. Eastern. So, which is uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, can you send a recording of the class on the Google Classroom? I always do. So, mm -hmm. it's, problem is, it these are big files. By the time I am able to upload them to YouTube, it takes me more than a day. Oh, okay. Yes, I, I will. I will definitely. What I will do, I will take out. Um, the presentation part, I will edit it. Only the presentation part that I will upload on YouTube so you can see your own presentation and okay. analyze it. Thank you. Okay, so um, look out for, so one thing, one more thing. This class is the biggest batch I'm running. There are three other batches. But um, this batch, um, you people don't um, do the homeworks that well. So uh, I don't know, I, I think uh, the homework is not all that, um, all that much. It should not take more than 20 minutes, maximum 30 minutes of your time. And I don't give every day. I give usually four days a week uh, homework. And I don't uh, penalize anybody for submitting uh, late homework also. But some of the people are not w looking at the Google Classroom. Some of you, uh, I don't want to name you. Some of you don't even, you show up in the class, but and then you forget about this whole thing. You are not part of the project. You did not even do submit the survey, which is I just I wanted some feedback on the class. Um, about 10 of you have not bothered to submit the survey also in this class. So what's going on? I don't know. But uh, my request to you is uh, stay engaged. And if there is uh, some some re personal reason like um, you are not well or you are traveling or uh, you have some other uh, more important, more pressing uh, uh, things happening so you're not able to pay attention just let me know that I'm not going to be able to submit the assignments don't 
uh, please excuse me from them don't um, hold it against me i am i am very flexible i will let you go i will not give you assignment that's fine but you have to communicate with me please so i hope you know how to reach out to me my email address my uh, whatsapp number all of that is available i will publish it again in the google classroom but please watch google classroom at least once a day or twice a day so that you know what is going on in in, in this batch okay that's my only other request so um, that's all today so let us do the shanti mantra Can you send us the link of the google forms it is there in the google classroom and whatsapp okay if you are watching the stream in the google classroom you will know that there is a survey published last week those who have not submitted your information please do that take the survey about 10 of you have not done so let's do repeat after me please you can unmute yourself om purnamada purnamidam पूर्णात् पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्यते पूर्णमेवाशिष्यते पूर्णमेवावशिष्यते पूर्णमेवावशिष्यते ओं सुखिन सर्वे सन्तु निरामया सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यन्तु सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यन्तु मा कश्चिद् दुःख भाग भवेत् ओम शांति 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 ओम शांति 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 नमस्ते एवरीवन सी यू नमस्ते 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 थैंक्स एंड बाय